I've got two Triceratops figures to review for you. Sadly not these little characters, who were made by my very talented friends Tiana and were left as a surprise on my desk on Monday morning. Thank you very much Tiana, these absolutely made my day, they are adorable. It is of course a different pair of Triceratops figures. These ones are from Everything Dinosaur, but ultimately they are from Eofauna. And this is Eofauna's only sculpt this year, but they've released it in two different varieties, as you can see. They've got the dominant one here and the cryptic one here. And they've been so clever with the sculpt that you can actually have both, and it actually works very well as a set. So, also, you can see there are minor differences, just with moulding and the way the things have been transported. You can see the tail on the dominant one here is more curved than the tail on the cryptic version. That's by the by, but it's because the material is quite flexible and safe. You can see there's quite a bit of give in these horns. It's quite soft. However, this is anything but a child's toy. For the price point, you can get both for under £40 from everything dinosaur. You can buy them individually for around £20 each, which for a sculpt of this calibre, for something with such high production values, is an absolute bargain to me. I mean, this is going to take some beating, this particular Triceratops sculpt. And Eofauna are all about quality over quantity, and with this Triceratops, they have definitely succeeded admirably. So I'm going to use, I don't have a favourite, although I do kind of lean towards this one, I'm going to use this cryptic version to demonstrate the finer points of the sculpt, as I just feel it shows up a little better in this light, with a lighter coloration. Starting with the head, of course. So Yoshi's trike is, I believe, in a private collection and has not yet been described, and depending on who the owner is, it could be a while before it is. And so we've mostly got the skull, and that shows that Yoshi's trike had incredibly long horns. So that's been shown by Eofauna here in the sculpt. Incredibly long, slightly upwardly twisted horns, as per Mark Whitten's research as well. Obviously keratin changes, your horn calls stay the same, but as you get growth throughout life, you get this curvature. So that's a lovely point. Apparently these would have been even longer in real life, but I tend not to worry about little points like that, because I think it's all down to individual variation. And of course there seem to be a lot of individual variation between ceratopsians. There seem to be uneven frills and uneven horns and all sorts going on with them. So, you can see the way the keratin of the horn merges into the skin with the skull and the frill, and that's absolutely beautifully done. You know, you've got the sort of carunculated look of the keratin on the horns there, and you've got the sort of keratinous look along the top of the snout as well. Now that's a really, really nice touch. The way the, all, all the soft tissues are shown here is really well done. Of course, you've got a little jugal horn there as well. I like the way this isn't sticking out so harshly as it often is on Triceratops figures. Absolutely beautifully done. And you've got this beautiful eye. The eye itself is the orange part. On this particular version, they decided to surround that in white just to make it really pop, and it really does look great. As you can see, it's very well painted, and it is on the other side too. It's got a real gleam of life to it. It looks absolutely fantastic. So looking along the jaws, you can see you've got these beautifully sculpted impressions of scales, very, very tiny. And that changes the texture of the skin around the nostril. Now, Ceratopsians had huge cavernous nostrils, and there's been some speculation that there was soft tissue in there that could maybe be inflated like a balloon. So Eofauna have left this kind of open-ended and given a sort of softer impression to the skin there, which is a fantastic touch. Along the jaws here, lot of wrinkling, beautifully done. And then of course the skin at the corner of the mouth here. It's unusual to see a Ceratopsian sculpted with a mouth wide agape like this. The whole pose of this figure is phenomenal, it's really dynamic. It's really, really well done. And this agape mouth, something you see more often on theropods, but it really works in this case. Of course, the skin at, this, at the corner of the mouth, this dermis, dermal tissue, is very flexible and adaptable. It would, of course, cover the teeth up when the mouth was closed. Draw mechanics of ceratopsians moved backwards and forwards as they were chewing on one plane. Uh, but they had incredibly advanced dental batteries. Of course, these things do not evolve in isolation. There would have been something which helped to keep the food in the mouth, which in this case, obviously, is a flexible membrane of dermal tissue. I often wonder how flexible the tongues of ceratopsians were too. I mean, we know in Tyrannosaurids that they weren't, but who's used to say that's true of all dinosaurs. Maybe we'll never know. If anybody doesn't know, please let me know. As you can see, the inside of the mouth is beautifully sculpted as well, and you've got these palatine nostrils. Turn around on the other side. 
so it's equally as well beautifully sculpted on this side. The painting is slightly uneven in terms of the markings, it's not something I'm particularly worried about. It just adds to the uniqueness of the figure. Obviously there is an element of hand painting which has gone on here. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the occipitals around the border of the frill, which is painted in a plain brown colour. So you've got the front legs. On this particular figure, I know when the promotional images were released, there was a bit of a controversy about the colour choice for these front limbs because it seems so at odds with the rest of the body of the trike, which is these lovely caramel tones. And actually doesn't look so bad in hand, and I quite like it. And I do like to believe that this is more the colours as the dinosaurs would see each other rather than the colours we would see them, because the chances are they had tetrachromatic vision and could see far more of the spectrum than we can, like modern birds and reptiles can. So, as per modern research, of course, the arms are folded backwards and splayed out. You can see the lovely wrinkled rhino-like skin. If we look at the underside, because it's obviously the skin and the body are based on the skin impressions which were associated with, I can't remember whether it's process or Herodus, we've gone for the crocodilian type underside, which was evident in that specimen. As you can see, the hands are unsonated. Beautiful crescent-shaped paws. Lovely sculpted nails. You can kind of see these better on this version than you can on the other. And again, crocodilian type scoots along the top of the fingers. The overall sense of movement in this figure is excellent. Again, eofauna tend to start from a skeleton, build the musculature and the skin over the top of that. As you can see from the skin texture, you can see it's got the little shield scales all over as per that other Triceratops specimen too, which is absolutely beautifully done and a very nice touch. Looking at this figure closely, you may also notice that the seams are barely visible on this. It really is a figure that's done with superb production values. It's a very complicated paint job. For the price, you really won't get a better figure than this. It's absolutely outstanding. So the other thing that the Eofauna have done here, obviously because it's stood in a sort of strong, resolute position, but this back leg is raised, it's a bit difficult to make it out in here, but you can see that it's the soft tissues of the belly are pulled up there as well. It's not just a belly hanging and then the soft tissues just around the leg. They've actually taken into account the movement of the soft tissues underlying that too. Absolutely fantastic touch. Lovely wrinkles and folds behind the frill. I often wonder what sort of parasites Ceratopsians must have suffered from around the back of the frill. It's not exactly somewhere they could get to to scratch, so there must have been a whole ecosystem of small bird-like creatures which lived on or around them to help them with that. Kind of like you see little fish on a reef cleaning larger fish and sharks. There is a beautifully sculpted cloacal vent here, which is quite crocodilian. It's not so clear on this version of my figure because there's a bit of a paint splash there. And of course, that incredibly slim, short tail that Triceratops had as well. The whole girth of the body is fantastic. There's no shrink wrapping at all. You can really see the movement of the tissues across the body. Absolutely beautifully sculpted. They've chosen to produce uh, sculpt larger scales on the flanks here. Just, just a nice touch. And again, the scales adjust with the contours of the body. You know, they're not all one size, regardless of the contours, which you see quite a lot with sort of cheaper figures. Um, and this just adds to the general realism of the piece. So it's absolutely stunning looking trike figure in both variations. Of course, this is designated as the dominant variation. In some ways, you can see that lovely skin detail around the face a little more clearly. And I think the mouth is a little better painted on this one on mine as well. Now again, this paint scheme is a lot more complex than you might think at first because, I mean, if you take it that this is obviously the same herd as that and that will hopefully eventually develop into a dominant one like this, then the coloration, this has actually got navy tones to it. It's a bit difficult to make out in this life, but you can see that there is a different coloration between the head, which is more charcoal coloured, and the body here, which has got the sort of navy tone. Fantastic touch from Eofauna. All the colours really are beautifully well blended. The pattern choice is very striking too. Excellent stuff from Eofauna. Of course, I don't have many Triceratops figures. I do have the big Papa one in the background here. The Eofaunas are at 140 scale, I believe. And of course, we've got mm -hmm. David Silver's superb Triceratops Horridus at 135 here. Again, an outstanding example of a Triceratops figure. 
I do feel personally that the Ophona figure eclipses it a little, just in sheer terms of accuracy. It's equally as striking, but if you want a figure that's going to sit on your shelf for years on end and look amazing, either or, either these ones or the Beasts of the Mesozoic will continue to look fantastic and current for a very long time to come. So I got these from Everything Dinosaur, got them as the pair. If you get them as the pair, you get a minor discount of about a pound. I shall place a link in the description below. I definitely recommend you check out Everything Dinosaur's website because they now have all of the current PNSOs in stock as well. And get there quickly because they do sell out very quickly. I would have liked to have also purchased the new Wilson. I was slightly staggered at the cost of that figure, but I will definitely get it at some point, as well as a load of the other new PNSO figures which are coming out. Everything Dinosaur also have the superb W Dragon, Giganotosaurus and Giraffe Titan figures and the Giraffe Titan figure seems to be around £65 mark which seems to be a very good price for that figure to me so please definitely go and check them out. They're a very ethical company, they adore dinosaurs, they adore their customers. Definitely worth checking out. So I hope you've enjoyed having a quick look at these two absolutely superb figures with me. The sculpts are absolutely amazing. I highly recommend these for any collection and I hope to see you in the next video.